internet. It is Sunday the 9th of April 2017. I need a haircut. And this, I'm right here. We're back down here at Mum's place in Culborough Beach for the Easter period. First of all, let's refresh this hideous head of mine. I need to clean this up. Can you do me the favor of cleaning this up? She's good at this. You've Looks seen like her before. Huge Look like huge Jackman. Huge Jackman. Jackman. Huge Jackman. Let's make this cut of the hair. What should I do? You just look cute with your little prank tail. How are you feeling back there? Yeah. Finished? I think like that side was a, like, a bit worse. Yeah? Like that. Take it's that good. bit off. Take the little girl. Now you look like a surfer with <laughs> so hey. Here comes the real test. Mother, what do you think of your daughter's hairdressing skills? Is? Mm. Turn around. Oh, Bannon. Why do you do that? That doesn't sound good. So bad. mother doesn't have much faith in her, but I do. Now I will clean my beard. That is how you shave and haircut style dress in Kalbara Beach in the early hours of the morning. It's 8 a.m. Let us go for a swim. Are you kids ready to get in the water? Yeah! Let's do it! That is so awesome. What a way to wake up. Beautiful Kalbara Beach. Fresh haircut, feeling great. Earlier this week, I had a few people ask me how I've made my Super 8 reels digitized, how I've done that digitization process. And I made a quick little video explaining how I've done that. While I'm taking another swim, you guys can watch this footage of how I've digitized my Super 8 reels. To answer Jack Moran, Dronus 4x4, and Michael Wilson, this is how I digitized my father's super 8 collection of reel to reel into the content that you see on my from the vault friday first port of call was to purchase a projector my father's passed away a long time ago all he did was leave us with these reels the projector we purchased was a thank you super 8 single 8 sound 600. First thing to notice is an extra wire coming out of this machine. This is one of the mods we've made. I'll get to that in a minute. As it stands, the machine works like this. Feed it in. That's all this thing. In a normal situation, this will be projecting an uh, image across to a wall four feet away. So we'll stop this. Instead of projecting this image onto the wall four feet away, I wanted to project the image directly into the sensor of my DSLR. So I grabbed my DSLR, took the lens off. So with the lens taken off, it was just a case of placing the camera right about here. And I did have it on, obviously on a tripod and I had it all set up nicely, but for the sake of this, I'll just leave it to your imagination. Switched into movie mode. When you hit movie mode, the uh, mirror flips up and suddenly you are now exposing your sensor to light, which is not the greatest thing for a, DSLR, but for the sake of this project, I was willing to allow a little bit of dust to come in there on the odd chance that it might. Picture the camera being placed right here for the duration of this next little bit. Once that was working, I quickly realized that the image through the lens of the projector was completely wrong. This lens is used to producing an image four feet away, whereas I'm producing an image that's right here. So what did I need to do? That's where we'll take this off. In this lens barrel, which is already modified, but I can show you kind of what I did. This particular piece is the back lens of, what was it, an 18 to 55. I've modified this is what I'm getting at. What it used to look like, this bit was sheared off and there was a different lens produce, proceeding, protruding out of here. So this little guy here, if you wanted to do this yourself, basically what I did was I bought an 18 to 55 at Cash Converters and I smashed it open. And this little piece here, you can see that it's super glued on. I just glued it on there. It might sound a little bit MacGyver and sure it was. When you put this back into the lens barrel there, it goes into a certain point and then you have to click it in. See that little click there, that's your focusing. When I have Add that all the way to where it's supposed to be, I could fine tune it by focusing it like this. Now it's very, very touch and go. You've got such a small amount of play there with this. Most of the focusing came from moving the camera 
back and forward a little bit and then fine tuning it with this. How did I work out that this was the lens I needed? It was actually trial and error. I smashed open that 18 to 55, played with the front element, played with the back element, played with the front element turned around that way. I played with the back element turned around that way. I played with a little extender to bring it further out. I played with glass basically. Eventually I worked out how to fill the frame on the DSLR as full as possible. And then once I'd locked that off, I never moved it. That's when we encountered the second problem. In a factory condition, this machine, the bulb inside it is obviously strong enough to produce enough light to project an image four feet away, potentially, possibly even longer. That is way too bright when you're changing that projection down to right up to the lens there. The old school bulb in here had to be changed. My technological mind didn't know how to do this. Fortunately, my sister's partner, James, has an electronics business. He has a knowledge of how this works. He installed a LED light that we could dial down and back up to match. This even gets more technical now. Each of these reels is not the exact same. So some of the stocks might be Hanamax, Tuscan, Stockco, Dasco, Posso. Each one of them is thicker than the one before it. So each one's gonna need a lot more or a lot less light to go through the film stock and to project onto the sensor. We know we needed a light that could turn up and down according to whatever film stock we're using. I'll take this cover off and show you what we did. So James got this beautiful LED. That little locking mechanism holds the whole thing in place. Then it basically just slides out. So that's your guy right there. The first time we put the LED light in, we didn't diffuse it with anything. We just put it in straight like this and there was all kinds of blooming going on. It just wasn't consistent enough. I used a, where did I get this from? I can't even remember where this came from. It's plastic. We cut it to match the front of the LED light. So that went on top of that. Surprisingly enough, it still wasn't diffused enough. So I ended up using a piece of paper and that combined with this was the right amount of diffusion to have that light right on the film stock and not blow anything out. This light, I told you before we needed to ramp it up and down according to the film stock. James made, he made a little dial and I'll show you how this works. Let's pretend that's where the uh, light sits. So we have a light now that is rampable. That's how we did the lighting. Now what I'll do, I'll put this back in place. So now that we had the light, problem solved, we put the light back in, we put the case back on, we fired it up, we tried to make a recording. The first thing that I noticed, and this is gonna get super technical now. So my timeline in Final Cut Pro is 25 frames a second. I knew that I had to shoot on my DSLR at 1 50th of a second. The problem with that was that the projector projects at two different frame rates, either 18 or 24. Now this is the part that confused me. You might have more of a knowledge of why this happened. When we projected this image at 24 frames a second into my DSLR shooting at a 50th of a second, we had a very pronounced movement up and down the film, not movement, flickering. It's gonna be called flickering. Very, very gradual flickering. I noticed when I changed it from 24 to 18 frames a second, the flickering subsided. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, something going on with the way the camera refreshes. Look, I don't really know, to be completely honest. I don't know why that was happening, but I knew it was getting less and less the slower the projector went. So that's where the third modification to this projector came in. James installed a motor that would slow the speed of the projector down. This is what it looks like. It's a dial on the side here. The reason it's a dial is because we weren't 100% certain what speed we needed. We gave it a, a bit of a wide berth to choose from a variety of speeds. Everything that we did was less than 18 frames a second. I don't, like I said, I don't understand why that was the case. In my mind, I thought if I matched the frame rate of 24 frames a second and I shot at a 50th of a second, that should have no um, flickering, but that's not what happened. It actually went the other way. Maybe you can tell me why, I don't, I don't understand. To preserve the factory settings of this machine, James also installed this switch here, which is I think called a hurricane switch or a cyclone switch. It means that you can't accidentally use it. So you have to lift it up and before you can switch it. So as it stands right now, the machine runs at 18 or 24 frames a second. Once you flick this up and turn it on, then you can ramp the speed down. I will show you how that works. So this is 24 frames a second. Projector's cool, it's running. We slow the projector down to 18 frames a second. 
slows down quite substantially. We know we need to slow this down even further, so we flick the safety switch on, and now we ramp this dial. Now that's running very, very slow. So when it was doing this, what I found was I could fine tune it by literally looking into the DSLR and I could incrementally up or down until the flickering was as minimal as possible. Now I gotta say, I'll just kill that for didn't entirely eradicate that flicker. That was the best I could get at producing an image from this projector, recording it onto the sensor, literally hitting record and then playing these reels all the way through. That's how I did it. I know there's other ways to do it. This technique isn't really suitable for mass preserving and digitizing of Super 8 reels. It was fine for my 20 or so that I had here. That was fine. But to go ahead and do this repeatedly. Like I said earlier, you've got your sensor open to dust all the time, having to literally sit here. I mean, I sat here for the whole night. This process worked for me. It's definitely not a be all and end all for how you should do it. But if you think that my results were fine and which, which my family, my mother and everybody, they're all stoked with them. We're now watching these on YouTube on my channel, it's fantastic. But like I said, it's probably not the only way to do it. There's many different ways you could do it. Now, if you have any questions, definitely hit me up. Just bear in mind that some of you technical things, particularly the frame rate and why, that's beyond me, I don't understand it. But if you have other questions, um, sure, I'll definitely help out. And even if you have questions about how this thing was installed and, and how it all works. If I can't answer it, I'll, I'll get James and he can definitely fill you in on, on how that all works. If you have questions about my post procedure, I'll happily walk you through that. Perhaps I'll make a video on that as well, I, if, if you think that's a good idea. So that's a quick look at how I did that digitization from Super 8 reels to digital. Things to remember though, I said this in the video, might not be the best way to do it, but it's the way that worked for me. Hey. Where is everybody? I think everyone's gone back up to the house. We've got to go up there and clean the windows anyway. We don't normally clean the insides of these windows. Yeah. Today, we are going to clean them very, you very well. are cleaning all of the insides down here. Baxter, you're going upstairs to clean the upstairs insides, cool? Yeah. And I will do the regular outdoor cleaning of both upstairs and downstairs. And then we will have clean windows for the entire week of Easter. <laughs> this job is a relaxing summer job. Baxter might be using just a little bit too much Windex. Look at this. I reckon you might be using a bit too much Windex, man. It's not Windex. It's glass clean with streak free shine. Power Force Australian made. Does that say streak free? Yeah. Wow, that's not streak free at all, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's false advertising. You're doing well that you're trying, but all these streaks are visible as clear as day. So that's the outside windows cleaned. Let's have a look at the children, what they've been doing on the inside, whether they've been doing a decent job or they've been faffing around. Looks kind of good actually. This window is great. I just did that window. It's good. You've both done well. I just fixed it. Well, well done. That's teamwork. That's what I wanted. Teamwork is what we were looking for and they achieved it. What do you think of the windows? I think they're very, very they're clean. Spotless. Really good. Who did them? Baxter or? I did downstairs and then I fixed Baxter's. Well, they are absolutely. It's 11 a.m. now. Is that too early for a beer? I wanted to come down here out of the wind to tell you about NSD. NSD this episode is Everyday Circus and Everyday Circus are a German band from Saarbrücken or just out of Saarbrücken. They toured with Tracer on the last European run or the UK dates of that European tour. These boys were fantastic, lovely dudes, great all-around people and really really cool, cool music. Like I, I'm a huge fan. I'm excited to be wearing their t-shirts to represent Everyday Circus here in Australia, in particular Kalbara Beach, where I'm sure there'll be no one else that's even heard of. They didn't even know German music existed here in Kalbara Beach. I've only had a sip of the beer too. I'm gonna show you their song, 
I am your anchor. Now I filmed this in Southampton in the UK. It was the literally the last show of the tour. And at the time it was their current single off their EP. Everyday Circus, I hope you boys over there are doing well. Cheers fellas. Check what I found coming. Dragon, dragon. A little bearded dragon. dragon. Beat look, at, dragon. look at this guy. That's the one that bit me. They run really quick. He bit you? Yeah. Did he bite you? <laughs> yeah. We do have some pretty cool animals in Australia. This little guy, put him back where he belongs because there are birds that are flying above that'll be looking just for this man to eat. This is literally where I found him. There you go, buddy. There you go. Already gone. Pretty fast, aren't they? Little bearded dragon. Australia. Funky animals. Did you just fart? 
He's farting as we speak. I'm getting out. Well, we had plans to go and watch the sunset tonight, but unfortunately, looking from here... It does not look very good. <laughs> there's not going to be any sunset there. That's just one massive bank of black, hideous clouds with lots of rain and lightning. Let's go down to the bench and just see the end of the day happen. It's only 4.30, would you believe? You don't like storms, do you? Yeah, I like being inside when there's storms, but the outside... Like, I don't like being outside of the storm. This is a get... big, this is a big storm coming our way, too. Yeah, Are you going to be okay? Yeah, yeah, I like storms. I'll Uncle Daddy! <laughs> yeah? I found something in the sand. Baxter found something buried in the sand? I what is it? Get it, out what is it? it? But it looks like it's something expensive. Baxter found something buried in the sand and it looks expensive? Let's go and check it out. Oh, that's, um, we're out of time! So that's the end of that vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Now YouTube's given me 20 seconds to tell you to subscribe or watch the previous vlog or watch a random vlog or order my Lightroom presets. Subscribe or watch the previous vlog or watch a random vlog or order my Lightroom presets. You can always subscribe or you can watch the previous vlog, watch a random vlog or you can order all my Lightroom presets. Perhaps you'd like to subscribe.